we were a group, we would do anything. It doesn't matter what aesthetic you use, it doesn't even matter what story you want to tell, but the words you use to describe that product can be detrimental to your success. So today, boys and girls, let's use our marketing buzzword of the decade, authentic. Over the course of the weekend, I've been participating in the Call of Duty World War II beta, and after a few hours experience in what the developers have put together, I have to inquire, is this a joke? The game starts off by imitating Command and Conquer, showing a bunch of Z-list actors in front of the same background to which you'll be forgiven for thinking you're watching an ISIS hostage video. This is where you're presented with your first falsified choice. Clicking on any division will still have you playing as a generic male with a face of pure constipation. Be that it may, I clicked on the armored core because it had a live action video of a British tourist that's wandered off from his tour guide. But still, my playable character is described as a US tanker. Despite the man stating in the video, this is the best the British army has. Upon my disappointment, I thought I would brush it off as a minor inconvenience and jump into some authentic online play that would showcase the horrors of war, thus eliciting a conversation of the tragedies of conflict and then I entered a game mode entitled War and was met with the Germans from Allo Allo. Our mission is to delay the enemy until reinforcements arrive and protect our flag guns. Flick the Gestapo! No, I said flick the Gestapo! The pigs from Shrek do a more convincing German accent than these sods. Anyway, with that thought going through my mind, I thought I'd check down on the ground to see if any expenses were spared in the production of this AAA game, and to my surprise, my character didn't have any feet. Since this is a game based on authenticity, I assume that this was a pure stylistic choice. No. To show the player the haunting nature of the brutality of war and to hammer home the finer point that many soldiers didn't survive for more than a minute in active combat and thus infer in your catchphrase, your feet won't touch the ground. And not because this product was rushed out quicker than the mistress and the wife comes home. Even the critically panned Infinite Warfare had feet. After composing my shock at the level of detail, the fine folks at Sledgehammer Games are poured into this project. I slammed up against the wall for cover and beckoned my team members over to aid me. A woman came over with full on lipstick and eyeshadow to help me out by dropping a bomb on the enemies that hindered our progress to the bridge. Yet again I was amazed by the authentic nature of women wearing full makeup in active combat because as we know from the historical archives through the allons of history, bombshells often went into war with foundation lip bomb. Before I knew it, the match came to a close. As the curtains drew on our matinee, I thought I would check out the other treats on offer, since I grew tired of seeing the same final cutscene every 12 minutes. It's no bad company, it's just bad. Still optimistic though, with my mind flashing back to the orchestrated chaos of the battles I had at World at War and Call of Duty 2, I excitedly pressed on into deathmatch, with my mind swimming with possible locales that the developers may have came up with, even if they were subjective, maps in authentic games are normally set in the most noteworthy ubiquitous locations, imaginable places that are iconic to the period, so as the loading screen faded in, my mind frantically formed ideas of where my soldier would be globetrotting, the blitz. North Africa, Dede, and then I was dumped into a street like the little man from Google Maps. I still wasn't disheartened because these creators stated that even the zombies are based on real events, so maybe the more enthralling environments are just being kept under lock and key for a later date. So, with my gun in my hand, I plodded off into hell shooting my way through player after player like a one-man army. I accidentally shot a friendly in the back as the red mist of my shell shock mind quivered under the pressure of the battlefield and instead of being locked in a military jail for desertion and possibly friendly fire, I was instead awarded a bronze star for bravery because there's nothing braver than shooting people in the back as they frantically try to pinpoint where the bullets are coming from. 
After we wrapped this fine facade, I moved on into the final few game modes, Hardpoint and Domination. As the loading screen popped up again, like an under construction sign on an unfinished bridge, I had another stroke of hopeful genius. I clicked my fingers together hastily and thought, Capturing points? Duh! Maybe this game mode will allow us to play as the SES, one of the most influential forces of World War II and established in July of 1941. Of course, a heartfelt company like Activision would honour all the valiant efforts of those who put their lives on the line to give us freedom. Isn't that right, Sledgehammer? Hark my serene cortex back to a video interview I watched on Game Informer moments prior to even playing this beta. Of course that's not what we got, it's capture the flag yet again. By this point I came to the startling realisation that this was indeed a crock of shit. Finally giving in to my own euphoric sense of ambivalence, I switched the game off. The moral of this story is a rather simple one. Games are interactive pieces of entertainment with a level of insidious design. They are used to accomplish incredible feats that we will never be able to do in real life. For escapism purposes, from our humdrum daily routines, for downtime, to experience a world that we will never visit, to grow our vocabulary, motor skills and learn information at a rapid pace, to praise those with an intriguing narrative and creative freedom not seen in any other form of media, and of course the most important buzzword of all, to entertain. These experiences are not meant to be taken serious, or have people on their high horse talking down to the fans that have stuck with them throughout the darkest times. They are not meant to belittle the player by providing them with self-refuting information from bigots. They are specially not made to undermine the courageous efforts of the brave men and women that died so that we could live. By sensationalising the brutality of the poor families that lost everything with smirky undertones of grandeur, this is the reason why people create these videos and complain about an interactive product. Not only does this attitude show a fanatic bias and close-mindedness to the hard work that every man, woman and child put into the war effort, it also paints the picture with black and white leaving out the grey moral antiquity in favour of characterising our protagonists as two-dimensional poster boys for a low-budget action flick from the 80s. If you really wanted to be authentic, you would write a compelling philosophical character study and create a level of sincerity towards diversity instead of a John Wayne wins the war B-movie that your company is putting out. So thank God we as a society commemorate those who we have lost and care for those who are still with us because it's been made pretty damn clear that Call of Duty couldn't give a shit. The lackadaisical annualised release of this brand may just be the wings that flew it too close to the sun and after seeing a concentration camp scene unfold in your latest story trailer in the same style as a Wolfenstein Tarantino flick, I can only hope you straighten up your carelessness, because descriptions are important and authentic is not what Call of Duty is, and it will never be. Or maybe I'm just being a bit pedantic. Oh, also, P.S. If you make Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill chug down Mountain Dew and eat off-brand Doritos while humming Eminem songs, I will indeed lose it. Thanks for watching all. Bye!